Warning, there's going to be some major spoilers for What Remains of Edith Finch, so if you haven't played the game yet, I highly recommend you go and play it. It's absolutely amazing. Alright, now on with the video. Imagine the sun on my face. The first time I saw What Remains of Edith Finch, it really surprised me. Right away the game looked stunning, and after a few minutes I was hooked on the story. You start on a boat as some unknown person with some flowers and a journal. The journal is opened and a lot of this isn't going to make sense to you. The story begins. The story is about this girl named Edith Finch exploring her old abandoned family house and the legacy that the house and her family held. The story enticed me immediately. It was so mysterious. So unusual. Throughout the game, Edith Finch explores the family house, and throughout it, tells of the crazy family stories. Each Finch died in some wondrous, wild way. Molly becomes various types of animals, constantly eating until she becomes an unstoppable monster. Calvin flies after swinging off of the swing. Barbara has a comic book style scare. and so on and so forth. We go through each family member one by one as Edith explores to understand more about her family. At the end, Edith summarizes when she was forced to leave the house and her life until that moment. The journal ends and we see her kid, the one she hinted at being pregnant with earlier in the story, following the same route as she did all those years ago. So as you can see already, this game has a big focus on the deaths of all the members of the Finch family. The Finches are notorious for this family curse that they've had for a very long time. However, if we dismiss this curse and take a deeper look at the real cause of the deaths, we see that the Finches died in much more childish ways. <laughs> Get it? No? Not the time? <sighs> okay, fine. An important note is that many of the Finches died early on. Molly, Calvin, Barbara, Gus, Gregory, and Milton all met their fate before they became adults, all dying in ways that were largely preventable. Molly dies by eating things that are likely poisonous, toothpaste, and holly, a decorative but highly poisonous plant. Calvin dies by trying to fly off his swing, which is right off of the edge of a cliff, meaning he probably fell to his death. Gregory dies as a poor little one-year-old, left to drown in the bathtub by his inattentive parents. Lewis's death is another tragic loss, and it's probably the most memorable sequence of the entire game. A little before Lewis is introduced, we are told that Dawn, Edith's mom, tried to raise her children as normally as possible and disconnect them as much as she could from the curse. You would hope that that would save them from the seeming inevitability of death, but alas, it doesn't. Milton supposedly disappears one day when he was around 10 years old, which leaves Dawn with only two of her three children. Because of this, Dawn takes extra care to make her children's lives as normal as possible to keep him away from the dangers of the family curse. This in turn makes Lewis feel like his life is incredibly boring and he starts to show signs of depression, which we can tell from the letter Edith reads. It's from his psychiatrist. The psychiatrist tells us that Lewis created a miraculous story in a daydream to the point where he got so enveloped in it that it led to his suicide. Rest, I think you know. Mrs. Finch, your son was a kind. Now, to what scale has his imagination taken over his life? Well, it started out like this, and it turned into this. His queen waited, holding his crown. In many of these cases, we see a hint of the Finch's imagination, of whimsical worlds they began to construct, but that's all we'll ever get. What we know about their lives is limited, mostly to their deaths. 
they never lived long enough to experience and express countless opportunities because of childhood mishaps that could have been avoided or because of uncontrollable factors that took over their lives. The game's story has already been talked about and explained so wonderfully many times before, so I won't tread those waters here. If you want an in-depth explanation of the Finch curse, I recommend you watch The Villain of Edith Finch. For now though, I want to emphasize the ending of this game. Edith goes into her room, picks up an empty journal, and starts to recall her final memories from this place. Edith, her mother Dawn, and her great-grandmother Edie are having their final dinner at the house. Edie tells Edith about a gift for her, and when Dawn brings up how it's their final meal at the house, Edie refuses to believe in the inevitable leave. While on the way to get that gift, Edith overhears Dawn and Edie arguing about the family stories. Edie argues Edith has a right to know these stories. And Dawn's response? My children are dead because of your stories! Following that, we see the gift, which is another one of Edie's stories. Edie recalls the night Edith was born, where Edie was able to walk all the way back to the old family house, which had been destroyed generations ago. Edie tells us that while making her way back to the house, she started seeing old things, things long forgotten. And just as she's about to explain why and how... Things I can't explain, but that I need you to try and... Edith, what are you doing in here? It's mine! Edith! Mom, you're gonna rip it! Let go! Edith's mother rips the book out of our hands. Afterwards, the ending comes quick. We get a few scenes. They explain how Edith and her mother left that night, and when a nursing van came to pick up her great-grandmother the next day, she was already gone. Dawn and Edith continue through life, and Dawn starts getting sick. And then, Edith explains how she was alone. That is, until she mentions the receiver of this journal, and through her word choice and the pulsing visuals, we realize she is writing to her future son. The journal ends, and her son appears in front of the cursed family house, in the same place that Edith had visited while she was pregnant with him. Initially, this sequence is very sudden, and a lot is not explained. What were the death stories leading to? Where did Great Grandma Edie go? I think that's the point, though. The game is trying to tell us something by not answering these questions. By leaving the immediate answer ambiguous, there's more to be uncovered. As far as I can tell, Great Grandma Edie was creating a legacy of her family before they even lived a fulfilling life. She loves to reminisce on her loved ones' lives, but we never see her looking at the present. The fact that she was willing to walk outside the house the night of Edith's birth instead of being there to watch and help is very representative of that. She's also very stubborn. She won't leave many things, the house, and the idea of a curse just to name a couple. This gives a good explanation for her disappearance as well. Edie disappeared the night that Don and Edith left the house, which is very symbolic. With no more finches living in the cursed family house, there is no one left who is living in the building where the family curse stems from. As a result, there is nothing left for Edie to support her grief with. She is literally lost everything. Another important thing to note is that I don't think there's any point in the game where a person that is currently alive is speaking. Almost all of the game is narrated by Edith, but as stated earlier, this is shown to be a written account by her of her experience exploring the house that she showed to her son after her passing. And the fact that all of the events in the story were in the past is an extremely important detail. It shows the permanency of each character's death, and the ticking bomb that is simply the passage of time. Her dad had been pretty strict, but it wasn't enough to save her brothers. She was just trying to do better. The death of the numerous poor Finch children, the decline of Lewis, and the disappearance of Edie all lead back to a big idea. Life is ever so short, and it's important to live it to the fullest while you can. Even Edith's death is characteristic of this. Edith dies early, like so many others in her family. The cause of her death is a birth complication, something she couldn't have avoided. She's aware of the possibility of her death while writing her letter, that she'll never be able to talk to her son, explain the crazy family stories, and try to understand with him, connect with him, any of that. And she wraps up all of those thoughts, worries, whatever you want to call them, simply by what she says at the end of her account. This is where your story begins. I'm sorry I won't be there to see it. It's a lot to ask, 
but I don't want you to be sad that I'm gone. I want you to be amazed that any of us ever had a chance to be here at all. Good luck. Like Edith said, it's a wonder that any of us have this opportunity to create our story. So let's do our best to make it count. Okay, so thank you for making it to the end of this video. I've been working a lot on this, and I've been wanting to make a video on this game for even longer, so it means a lot. If you want to hear more about this game, I got a couple links right here. Otherwise, if you're feeling like it, like, subscribe, all that good stuff, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye! See ya!